5 Washington Road in McMurray, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002. For Dennis J. Courtney, M.D. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to AIM Impact on Your Health. AIM Impact on Your Health, where every day our goal is to have you learn at least one thing to help you live better and longer. AIM Impact on Your Health, heard every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney, and I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. And impact on your health for each day you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, fascinating health topics, and where we encourage you to call in to join in. Today, hey, within minutes of eating this common food, uh, a bunch of uh, blood levels of certain waste products starts to meteorically rise within your body, moving everywhere, leading to things like high blood pressure, diabetes, fatty liver, obesity. What is this common food? How in the heck can you prevent that thing from happening? Well, we're going to find out that it's easy to control that. When we talk today about something called the sugar connection, we'll get more into it today. Uh, we'll allow you to come on in and either participate in that discussion or start a brand new one. We are going to be talking about the sugar connection today. An interesting bit of science finally comes our way to make some sense of it all. And we always like to do that when that's possible. Now, if in the course of our discussion about the sugar connection or anything else that may enter your mind, the number to come in on this and give us a call and actually set the agenda is 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. We'll be talking about this sugar connection today. Now, uh, let's see, up and coming. Got a couple of, um, a couple of guests scheduled right around the corner. Don't have them inked yet, so can't really talk about them. I will mention because it's um, uh, interesting to, to, it's just fascinating to me that the guests coming up there in the month of June, June at the Freedom of Choice in Cancer Therapy Group, a, a gentleman for 100 and seven years old, turning 108, um, is going to be there on the 17th. His name is Bernardo Lapayo. Oh, wait a minute. He turns 109. I missed. I think I took a year away from him. Um, 109 years old uh, on August 17th, and he's going to be up there on the 17th of, uh, of June. Oh, uh, we've covered a lot over these past many weeks. Uh, geez, we talked about... Uh, the, uh, thyroid, the thyroid connection, uh, and whether you have it, meaning the disease, what uh, uh, Todd Scarborough had to bring to you in the way of uh, shedding those winter pounds. Deborah Ray was with you. This is all last week, by the way, talking about harmony, the spirit, the body, and the mind, all centering around her fantastic product called Fruit of the Spirit. Now in collaboration with uh, a couple of medical doctors, John Young and Aida Reyes, she publishes a book. Three copies are available here in my office. Give us a call. Uh, come on in. Stop in and see us. Uh, we'll give you a free copy. We'll also give you a, a free taste of what Fruit of the Spirit is like. I guarantee you, you will enjoy it, and you'll want to do something about it. If you want to do something about it without even coming in the office, that's pretty easy to do, too. Uh, you can use this phone number. You hear this phone number mentioned, as Deborah Ray does our commercial spots for Fruit of the Spirit. But uh, jot it down, 1-800-442-3793, 800-442-3793. And um, also, too, by the way, for those of you, those of you who are technologically inclined, uh, the um, website is fruitspirit.net. That's fruitspirit.net. Now, just uh, on Wednesday, when we were last together, we were talking about uh, a brand new blood test. Remember, uh, I can't tell you how frequently throughout the year, probably three or four times, uh, I do a show entitled The Eight 
blood test, you just have to be able to get to know what your cardiovascular status is. And of course, I keep telling you each and every time, that unless you specifically ask for them, you're not going to get them because your doctor is uh, not going to order seven of those eight. Now, we have had that show uh, both repeated as well as done in the live many, many times. And uh, every time I run into one of you out in the streets, you'll, you'll say to me, hey, what are those eight things again? Uh, well, if you were with us the other day, what you learned is that there's now a ninth test. I told you that it was coming. I said that when it did come, that we would bring it to you, and we did. It all has to do with the size of the particles. So when I said that you could order, and your doctor more than likely would order, a test called a lipid profile, and that's the one that the entire medical profession has bet the ranch on, I say, uh, what your cholesterol, triglyceride, HDL, and LDL levels are, that's the one study that the doctor is going to order for sure. Now, the other seven, forget about it. I'm not going to order them. But now we have a new test, all centered around this thing called LDL, because it may come back normal, and if it did, that doesn't mean all is well, because we have a new test. And so I just mentioned it to you again today. You may want to talk about it today. You may want to give me a call at 412-825-6262 to discuss it because the ninth test, which has finally arrived, by the way, there's probably a tenth test on the way to use science whenever science is available, as I've always said, to be able to do objectively what you can't accomplish subjectively. You would never know what your status is with the size of the LDL particle. Turns out the smaller the size, there are six different sizes that they can measure, but the smallest of the sizes is the most dangerous, the most making you the most vulnerable, and genetically, if you hang on to large quantities of it, you are at definitely increased risk for cardiovascular disease. So the ninth test has arrived. I mentioned it again to you today. It has to do with particle size, and it's one of the tests that always gets done whenever we do our evaluations here uh, via our cardiologist, Dr. Oliver Caminos. Um, that blood test is now included in the Courtney panel and is obtained on every single patient that we do those workups on. So um, rather than fighting with your doctor, come on, become a friend of ours. Uh, by that, I mean Dr. Oliver Caminos who comes to the office, uh, by the way, doing today, comes twice a month, and uh, uh, we'll be having all those lab tests drawn on a number of patients um, today as we do the job that we normally do. So look, we're letting you set the agenda there if you'd like. I am going to talk to you about this, uh, this brand new science information that sort of answers the question about sugar. Lord knows we've had a negative connotation about it, and probably correctly so. Uh, turns out there's science now behind why it is so, and we're going to talk about it today. So let's do this. Let's take a short break. When we come back, you can start setting the agenda immediately around here by giving us a call at 412-825-6262. You can wait a bit while I bring to you some of that scientific information about sugar. Well, wait, not wait. Call, not call. You make that call on your own. We'll be back in a moment to talk about it with you. <clears throat> this is Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instructions, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting-edge allergy correction, 
and host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, M.D., is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Honey, just got the word. The company's new health plan has a $5,000 deductible. We have to make sure nobody gets sick this year. Remember what those doctor's visits cost for last year's cold and flu? Oh, sorry, sorry, I've got to go. Love you. We can do this. We can cut the fast food lunches. Soda, that's a lot of sugar. We could all take that evening walk. And hey, I heard a program about fruit. Fruit of the Spirit. What did they say? One ounce, the equivalent of five servings of fruit with herbs and minerals. We could add some to our breakfast protein shake. Fruit of the Spirit is a unique whole fruit parade. Fruit of the Spirit contains fresh fruits native to the Holy Land and alkalizing minerals from the Dead Sea. With no added sugar, Fruit of the Spirit is a unique product from five years of work from science-based nutritional experts. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit of the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. Fruit of the Spirit, convenient, affordable, and delicious. That's 1-800-442-3793. Call them now, 1-800-442-3793. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back once again to AIM Impact on Your Health. Heard here on KHB 620 each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney with you. On this Wednesday version of the show, it is, uh, well, it's a heck of a week out there, equally bright out there today, and allowing you to come on in and enjoy the warmth and the sunshine uh, as we meet for this hour. And uh, you may decide you want to chime on in at any old time, and you're allowed to do so. Uh, at 412-825-6262. We encourage you to do so, as a matter of fact. Whether it's going to be on topic or off topic, it's okay with me. That's 412-825-6262. Now, I'm going to spend a few moments, because I think uh, whenever science comes in with the explanations, um, we really do need to use the science and gravitate toward it. We make, we being those uh, who are in a non-conventional, taking non-conventional looks at our health, uh, oftentimes sometimes make broad sweeping generalizations. And uh, there's no other case that I know of this to be even more true than the generalized assumption that sugar is bad. Okay, I think that, uh, that everybody would, would agree. And uh, the, uh, the generalizations, um, to try to make a case for this, uh, although they statistically are probably accurate, they never were seemingly accurate enough to provide the science. Here, you'll see what I mean. For instance, talking about hypertension, blood pressure, uh, here's some of those facts, some of those things that come by us that uh, allow us to make uh, statements, but then no science to back up how the statement is either accurate or not. How about statements like this? In 1860, the president, the president, the prevalence of uh, a body max index of 30 or higher, which defines obesity, was 1.6% among 50-year-old men. By 1900, that's uh, 40 years later, it had tripled and sharply increased over the past century. Now, just keep this in mind. These are the kind of facts I know I've heard before. Maybe not that particular one. Let's see if you heard this one. Like obesity, hypertension was also rare prior to the 20th century. In 1900, uh, this generalization would state, and probably is factually correct in terms of statistics, in 1900, only 5% of the population had high blood pressure of 140 over 90 or higher. Now that is more than likely accurate. By 1939, 10% of the adults had blood pressure above 140 over 90. Today, 31% of adults are hypertensive. Those are all statistically accurate. The answer to the question why the science for how that could be so had never really been explained. Prior to 1940, there was no such thing as a cardiologist even. There was no need for them. However, that was only 70 years ago. The reported 
uh, the first report angina case was in 1929. And look how frequent it occurs today. In 1950, there were 500 cardiologists in the United States. Now there are 35,000. <laughs> and every one of them are very, very busy. They perform the 1 million heart surgeries annually. What's the driving and eruptive uh, force in cardiovascular disease? Well, one key uh, answer to this um, swings around to a discussion of the Western diet, and now the focus comes down to what I started our discussion today talking about is the sugar connection. Now we got a medical doctor, his name is Dr. Richard Johnson, who is one of the physicians on the cutting edge of sugar metabolism research today, uh, the focus being on how an overabundance of sugar in the American diet particularly fructose sugar, to find out about that in a minute, is causing obesity, hypertension, diabetes. All of these have soared in the last century. They continue to soar even more so now. Uh, but the, the, even though statistically we've known it to be able to soar and has done so, the science as to how has really avoided us. And that's really what we're going to be talking about today. For the first time in a long time, now some science is available to be able to make that link positive, and that's what we're going to share with you today. Now there's a connection, turns out, uh, being made between sugar, we're going to roll table sugar, fructose, and something that I'm sure you all heard before, and um, today we're going to be talking about it in a number of different uh, contexts, but that is a substance called uric acid. Keep in mind now, uric acid. Uric acid is a waste product of the metabolism, of, uh, of purine metabolism, and you're going to see where it is absolutely connected to this meteoric rise in all those medical conditions we talked to, uh, we mentioned a moment ago. Uh, and that there is a connection between sugar and high blood pressure. Now, it's known for a long time that purine-rich foods would drastically increase the uric acid content in the body. And it is no surprise that medical books have indicated for many, many years now that uh, with this eleva elevation in uric acid, it's always been associated with high blood pressure. It's been associated with kidney disease. It's been associated with increased resistance to glucose metabolism. Uh, associated with increase in triglycerides, obesity, fatty liver, LD, increases in LDL and cardiovascular disease, uric acid has always had that connection with every one of those medical um, uh, phenomena that I just got done describing. Now, as it now turns out, and I think where the science starts to cast the light on the sugar connection to all these things is the most profound way to increase your uric acid. And I think that this is the new scientific fact that um, had been eluding us before, but the most profound way to increase your uric acid level, which has been shown to have a relationship to all those medical problems that I just mentioned a second ago, is by consuming simple sugar. Therein lies which could become scientifically tight, which would be the, the sugar connection. So what about this stuff called table sugar and fructose? By the way, you've heard us mention many times um, this fructose is, uh, really does have a bad connotation. High fructose corn syrup. Fructose in any quantity is something that I'm sure you read your labels for. I know I do. Try to find out if there's a... Uh, any content of fructose in anything that I'm going to consume for myself or provide for my family. And when I see it there, that particular item gets discarded and cast aside. But if you didn't know about the sugar connection, uh, the table sugar connection, which goes something like this. This is scientific fact. Uh, sugar is called sucrose. And sucrose is made of two simple sugars. One of them 
is glucose. The other one is fructose. So, okay, we start to see a connection between sugar and nothing wrong with the glucose. Your body's perfectly, once it starts breaking down these simple sugars, and by the way, um, it does so immediately. When you consume table sugar, within minutes, the breakdown occurs first into the two components. One is fructose and the other is glucose. The glucose component, well, the body is set to handle that. There's no problem whatsoever. Every cell in your body is geared to be able to handle the glucose component, and there's no real negativity to be associated with it. However, the fructose component, there certainly is, because it breaks down into a number of waste products, the number one of which that we're talking about today is uric acid. So it turns out that the sugar connection is such because sucrose, which table sugar really is, is made up of fructose and glucose. But while glucose is being metabolized very safely uh, with nothing but benefits and no downside, the fructose component is being metabolized into waste products which are not good, which are harmful, and the number one um, waste product is this purine called uric acid that has been associated with all those medical conditions, the, the hypertension and the kidney disease and the, and the obesity and the diabetes, and, and the list goes on and on and on and on. So how is it then that uric acid, which is the next bit of science, how is uric acid involved with provoking hypertension? Okay, we know it's a waste product. Does it provoke hypertension, or do people with hypertension have elevations in uric acid? This appears to have been the question that had been clouded for years. What's the cart? What's the horse? Well, it turns out that uric acid appears to be what's causing a hypertension. And how does it do so? It does so by inhibiting the production of nitric oxide. And when nitric oxide is uh, limited, blood vessels lose their ability to relax. Nitric oxide provokes smooth muscle relaxation. It allows the muscles within the lining of the arteries to loosen up. And blood vessels lose their elasticity when nitric, uh, nitric oxide is not produced. And there goes the blood pressure and it will start to rise. And that is your scientific explanation of a sugar connection, table sugar connection, that we've been hearing about for the longest time in terms of, well, the beginning of the last century when they weren't refining sugar, things were this way. And then in the course of the 1900s, they increased and doubled and tripled and quadrupled and quintupled and the like. We always had the statistics, but we never had the scientific connection. That sugar connection is now made. We want to thank um, uh, Dr. Johnson for really bringing this to our attention so that we have the scientific explanation as to why. And now you know why, and that sort of tells, in the words of the great Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. So let's do this. Take a short break. Come back. We'll open it up to you if you feel that you uh, want to talk a bit more about the sugar connection. By the way, if this is an issue, meaning sugar is an issue, then your fructose amounts have got to be monitored. We'll talk a little bit about, um, hey, is that fruit that you're thinking about eating bad for you? We'll see what I mean by that in just a moment. Be back in a moment with more discussion on the sugar connection.
to the doctor lately? Was fatigue top of your complaint list? Even if your doctor asks you what you eat, the recommended five servings of fruits and vegetables a day is a treat in your busy schedule. What if you learned of a product five years in the formulation that delivers five servings of fruits and minerals in just one ounce? That's right, it's through the spirit. The blessings of through the spirit are now formulated into a delicious whole fruit puree product rich in antioxidants and minerals. Your health is more than just a test result. It's a balance of physical, spiritual, and emotional factors. You work regularly to strengthen your faith, but food the spirit help cover your nutritional needs in a convenient and cost-effective ounce a day. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. Fruit of the Spirit, five servings of fruits and minerals with no added sugars. That's 1-800-442-3793 for your good health. Call them now, 1-800-442-3793. This is Dennis Shea Courtney, MD. You become confused about how best to manage your health. It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instructions, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting-edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray, phone 724-942-3002. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back once again to AM Impact on Your Health. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney with you on this Wednesday version of AM Impact on Your Health as we are with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 8 and 9 talking about something called a sugar connection. Well, uh, you certainly always knew that the sugar wasn't really good for you. Um, you probably even heard about all those um, crazy statistics going back as early as the 1900s. And you believed them. I think I believed them, too. Just didn't know why. And today, science, as it marches on, starts to provide the answers as to why. And every time we get some of those answers, we bring it to you. We're allowing you today to uh, come on in and discuss this with us uh, by giving us a call at 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. Do we have a knock on the door? Anybody there? Hello? Yes, go right ahead. Hi. Always, always great to hear you. I tell everybody, turn that radio on Monday. Turn that thing on. <laughs> What's on your mind today? You know what? Uh, uh, sugar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we tend to get a little confused, which I do, uh, you know, with honey and maple syrup, you know, because I've had a lot of things come through my emails about, you know, cinnamon and honey for you know, heart disease, indigestion. And for diabetes. A, a wonderful, yeah. Fatigue, and I'm like, this sounds like a thing that could just keep us going forever, you know. So uh, I'm a little confused um, on that. And maple syrup and bicarbonate of soda. Well, there are um, choices out there. Mm -hmm. So you are you wrestling with this concept of the sugar even in your own diet? I'm sure as as to what to pick and how to and what quantities to to consume. Yeah. But you know what? Um, my husband had got me some honey. Um, it was just fresh last year. He got me like a whole quart, and I thought, what am I going to do with a whole quart? <laughs> but you know, Dr. Courtney, I took it every day, and I felt fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I didn't eat it like, you know, a, a quarter of a cup or anything, but I'd put it in my tea. I would just, you know, I'd just take a spoonful if I wasn't going to be having tea. You know, I'd think, you know, just a little, um, like a half a teaspoon or something. Well, of course, you did that to avoid, because you, you knew that table sugar, per se, was something you didn't want to use. Oh, absolutely not. And so absolutely you not. went I, for... I do use agave, you know. Yeah, and you got to be careful of the kinds of agave that you do use, too. I well, heard about that. Yeah, you got to really be... Did you talk about that one day or something? I did hear about that or an email. Yes, I did. 
Yeah, um, we'll we'll talk about it even a little bit uh, uh, further on this morning on uh, the selection of agave because uh, certain types you really can't use, other types you can, and so selecting a a sweetener is really an important thing nowadays. Things like stevia are okay, regular stevia, but you have to avoid stevia stevia based sweeteners because when they put something else in it, the pure stevia is one thing, but when they start adding things to it. Like there's a product called Truvia and Pure Via and things like this. Now these become problematic. So um, you're you're wise to be looking for a replacement for sugar. By the way, uh, this issue of the fructose, and that's why the sugar component is so dangerous. I hope you picked up on that. That this table sugar. I read that article and I sent that out all to all my friends. I don't know if that's the one that. Uh, Where'd you get that article? Um, it was on uh, email, and uh, there mm-hmm. was somebody talking. My, I, I thought that it was a short video, but it was not a short video. I can send it to you. It okay, flip it my way. Be happy to, to, to listen to it. And uh, this is uh, finally the first science being shed on this, and, mm-hmm. and uh, it just helps us all to appreciate all the more. Uh, and also, too, uh, in trying to lay out our fructose consumption. It's a new thing that... Um, that I think we're going to have to take a look at, even with real healthy things like fruit. And in a moment here, I'm going to be talking about looking at the fructose content of, of even these natural products that we all thought were so healthy. turns out there's a fructose quantity in every single one of them, and in knowing that, you'll be able to choose more wisely and select more wisely. Well, that's excellent. You know what, Dr. Courtney? I think it was um, Mercola. Joe Mercola's site? It was on his site. Very good. It's on his site, and it, uh, it's, it's, you're going to have to, you know, take about a whole three minutes. <laughs> All righty. Thanks. For... You know, Dr. Courtney, I Go. have a very important question. Go ahead. I'll see if I can. Sure. Uh, radiation burn. Um, my best friend um, um, is getting radiation right now, and it is terminal. It's lung, mm-hmm. and it has spread to the upper um, left side of the bone, that clavicle. And she's having, you know, uh, like it's right in the middle, you know, where the line, and the heartburn is just so bad. And I told her, I'm sure it was a, a radiation burn. Do you have any recommendations to help this? Well, what with the the kind of burn that one receives from uh, from radiation, and, and the yeah. word burn is absolutely accurate because this really is because of the conductance of right. heat right. Uh, penetrating through the skin, through the muscle layer, through the bone as they focus the real amount of this beam to how they gauge where the actual lesion is. Um, And so it's burnt tissue. It's going to have to, um, it's going to have to heal like all burnt tissue. Like sunburn. Oh, uh, even more profound than that. Of course, um, you know, in these latter stages of, of cancer, it is one of the few things left behind that may be able to stave off the, the inevitable with some amounts of time. I will say, I'm going to introduce a concept that the, even in the later stages of a cancer, especially lung cancer, I'm going to put something on the table that I think needs to be considered. And it's very difficult, if not impossible, to find, to find this medical procedure done in Pittsburgh. And I thought we were a medical mecca here. I thought that we had, like, uh, the most advanced, the most up-to-date, forms of, of therapies available, and it turns out that's not the case. But in, in these latter stages of cancer, there are two therapies that are very well developed and are found quite easily in other parts of the country. They're just not found here. And uh, one of them is called radio wave ablation. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, radio wave ablation, and the other is cryoablation. Now, my connection, and I do have a connection, uh, oddly enough, and I've had him for years, and a good friend of mine, a doctor, a radiologist, and of all places, Toledo, Ohio. Isn't Toledo, Ohio the brunt of many a joke? Okay. Uh, well, guess what? Guess what? Uh, in Toledo, Ohio, the, the gentleman that I know uh, has been utilizing things like radio wave ablation in precarious lung lesions where surgery wasn't even possible. Yeah, and that's what's wrong with her. That's right. But so where the heart and the digestive, they have to take her heart out. Oh, boy. Uh, 
I'm just putting that on the table as something to consider in these later stages that actually doesn't require a major intervention, just a little little uh, uh, incision at the skin level, insertion of a catheter. It's done as an outpatient. But I'm going to recommend that uh, you pass that on to this friend of yours. Yeah. Radio wave ablation. Um, oddly enough, um, I, can't, I can't seem to find it being done in Pittsburgh. If anybody out there knows of it being done, please tell me. I'd be happy to know because the last time, which is about two years ago, that I attempted to find it here in the city, what I found was it was just starting. It was just in the early stages. And Toledo, Ohio was way ahead of us by virtue of the gentleman who was well-educated in Toledo. I don't know where he got his training, but evidently uh, it's available someplace. And it, But where it isn't available is in this mecca of ours called Pittsburgh, which we thought had all these great and wonderful things. Well, if you have a transplant issue, I think that's what we're the mecca of. But if it's not a transplant, we're not at the top of the list with these medical uh -huh. procedures that I'm now finding out. Uh -huh. um, uh, can I call later and get that information? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, sure. Um, uh, go, go Google it up in the meantime. Uh, radio wave ablation. O-B-L-A-T-I-O-N. -A -A radio wave ablation -A -A and cryo ablation. Cryo is utilizing a freezing technique. Pardon me? Is it a cryo? cryo is C-R-Y-O. Cryo oh, okay. ablation and radio wave ablation. These are two modalities that can be used in the latter stages of diseases in organs that won't even, they won't even attempt a surgery. They won't attempt any lung surgery. Here they're using radiation when in fact it's possible, it is possible to um, utilize these really advanced therapies uh, that are found so infrequently to literally zap those lesions. I use the word zap to indicate, you know, that uh, you can just vaporize them. That's the word, vaporize them. It's not as invasive as what you're saying. Pardon me? It's not as invasive. Oh, it's not invasive at all. It's just a little slip to insert a catheter. Uh, they'll use an x-ray guidance to put the catheter in the right place. But uh, uh, I, I mentioned it to you simply because uh, you're the friend that you have. There are plenty of people listening to me right now who have right. friends in a similar set of circumstances. Yes. And... Um, right. With the burns, hey, that is a significant burn, and that, that tissue is going to have to heal. But we're looking for, to get um, a much better result than... The pain relief, though. Is there anything that can do now so we can get her there? Oh, there are... There are Radiation? With, uh, oh, yeah, there definitely pain. I will say this much as an anesthesiologist involved in the, the, the pain component of cancer patients for a career's worth now. Yes. Uh, there's no reason... No patient should suffer because of the pain of the cancer or of the treatments of cancer because there absolutely is a way that that can be handled and should be. Can you believe they're not doing any? I oh, mean, oh, that's a shame. they're yeah. giving her nothing. Oh, digestion. I, she got a prescription for digestion yesterday. What, a digestion? This is like, and, and these, are, <laughs> these are supposed to be the top people here, and I don't want to say where I'm at. I, mean, no. I know you would know if I pulled you up. Who I am, but. All right, there, there, there's some things that need to be considered here. I hope I've given you some guidance. I'm glad you called today, so especially Thank about the much. sugar and the good luck. And hit Google up ablation, both the radio wave and the cryo. Thank you so much. Okay. God bless you. Bye bye. Absolutely. Yeah, folks, I was surprised um, to find that the Pittsburgh was not in lead on uh, some pretty important therapies out there, and. That now for I'm, I've had this gentleman uh, physician friend of mine for at least seven years now, and so seven years ago, Toledo, Ohio was in front of us, um, and they're still in front of us today. Toledo, Ohio, the brunt of many a joke. Uh uh, joke is on us. Hey, let's take a short break. In the interim, you may want to call to ask a question when we get back. How about this question with what well, you just were taught this morning about? The fructose connection. How about this question? Is fruit bad? Hey, let's take a look at that when we return. We will be back in just a moment.
is Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough that no matter how dutifully you follow the instructions, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting-edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Honey, just got the word. The company's new health plan has a $5,000 deductible. We have to make sure nobody gets sick this year. Remember what those doctors said that the cost for last year's cold and flu? Well, sorry, sorry, I've got to go. Love you. We can do this. We can cut the fast food lunches, soda. That's a lot of sugar. We could all take that evening walk. And hey, I heard a program about fruit. Fruit of the spirit. What did they say? One ounce. The equivalent of five servings of fruits with herbs and minerals. We could add some to our breakfast protein shake. Fruit of the Spirit is a unique whole fruit puree. Fruit of the Spirit contains fresh fruits native to the Holy Land and alkalizing minerals from the Dead Sea. With no added sugar, Fruit of the Spirit is a unique product from five years of work from science-based nutritional experts. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit of the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. Fruit of the Spirit, convenient, affordable, and delicious. That's 1-800-442-3793. Call them now, 1-800-442-3793. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back once again to AM Impact on Your Health, heard here on KHB 620. Each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney with you today on this Wednesday version of the show. We've been talking about sugar. Uh, some science finally sheds a pretty bright light on the subject of sugar to give us the, the scientific explanation for why sugar is bad. We always knew it was bad. We always knew it was related to increased levels of diabetes. And to, to, to provide the answer and how that mechanism can occur, uh, I think is a nice link and... Um, I dot up the Mercola website while we're off air. And, uh, geez, sure enough, there's a wonderful um, article on this. And I ask you to go to it and read it and check it out. And one of the things that came up while I was looking at this is this issue of, uh, of, uh, of where you find the fructose. Fructose is the component you want to avoid. Glucose is not. Glucose is fine. Fructose is not fine. And I think um, with the uh, uh, bit of uh, intellectual honesty is, uh, has to be mentioned is fructose is found everywhere too. And so what you have to do is when you select uh, what you're going to conclude in your diet, you have to be mindful of the amount of fructose content in these natural products. Oh, yeah, you'll read the label. And if it says high fructose corn syrup, you'll drop it like it was uh, radioactive. But you can't be smug and thinking, well, I'm going to go over here uh, to the, and this is why I asked the question just before we left rhetorically, is fruit bad? We're going to find out, hey, all fruits have varying degrees of fructose in them. Fructose is the component that you have to be careful with. It's fructose degradation that leads to the formation of uric acid. And that uric acid content is associated with the increase in the incidence of all of those things. It's, once again, it's, it, that, that list was pretty impressive. Not only will it increase blood pressure, and you now know why, because it prevents nitric oxide from forming. It's also associated with... Um, the, uh, with kidney disease, with insulin resistance, with elevated triglycerides. This is all due to uric acid um, uh, elevations in the body. Um, and I, the point was, we thought that when you had 
um, a, a disease, it's because of the disease that your uric acid level went up as it's turning out that the science is showing it's because your uric acids are elevated that you're getting the disease. Completely reverse of how this was explained in the medical school context which I last heard of it. The last discussion I had on this subject was in a medical school class. Now it looks like it needs to be reversed. Anyway, is fruit bad? By the way, you can get in on this too. We've got 10 minutes left. You can call up and talk about this if you'd like. The sugar connection, 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. Anything on your mind is okay with me. Now, one simple fact that uh, has not been given to you yet. This came out on the McCullough website. I bring it to you now because this is an interesting component that you have to consider. And here it is. The fact is, glucose, which is wonderful and great for you, makes fructose even more potent. Now, that's something to consider. The, the, the article goes on to say that fructose consumption clearly causes this insulin resistance. We just mentioned it. Uh, where straight glucose doesn't cause any insulin resistance and can eventually lead to full-blown diabetes, talking about the fructose consumption. Interestingly, and here's the punchline, glucose actually accelerates fructose absorption. So when you mix glucose and fructose together, you absorb more fructose than if you just consume the fructose alone. Pretty powerful state. Now, why is that a, a very important fact to know? Because it's common for us to grab fruit, uh, and we believe fruit, and it is a very healthy substance uh, in terms of choices. It's a wonderful choice, uh, especially if it's organically grown, not to worry about the pesticides, uh, a wonderful choice it is, but because every uh, sweet fruit that you may enjoy, it all has a fructose content plus a glucose content, and wherever there's glucose, fructose gets absorbed quicker. So you now, according to the Mercola website and uh, Dr. Johnson, uh, need to keep track of how you pick the fruits, how you select them, and give you an idea now of uh, what they say. They say that uh, you should keep your total fructose consumption below 25 grams per day. However, for most people, it would actually be wise to limit your fruit fructose. Why this? Because it's a combination of glucose and fructose together. And whenever you have glucose, we now know, science has told us, I didn't know until this very moment, that wherever there's glucose, you absorb fructose faster. So uh, in a uh, fruit where you're trying to select it and there's going to be a glucose component, you have to even lower your grams of fructose to 15 grams or less. Now, with that in mind, let's get an idea what some of these fruits have in the way of their fructose content. Uh, way down on the list. Hey, there, there is a, a fruit here that has absolutely no fructose in it, uh, and it heads the list, and uh, there are actually two. And one's called lemon, and the other's called a lime. Not the most favorite thing that you're going to grab before you walk out the door to take the work, but uh, literally no, absolutely no worry about fructose with it. Uh, cranberries, small quantity, 0.7 grams in a cup. So it's a good choice. Passion fruit, 0.9. And in one medium, uh, in a prune, uh, 1.2 grams in one medium prune. In an apricot, 1.3. You see, very low. Good selection here. Let's try to find some of these fruits that you would be uh, more prone to grabbing. And uh, how about a grapefruit? Either the pink or red grapefruit, which is a common breakfast item, um, uh, it's healthy. You know what? It is doggone healthy because even though there is a glucose-fructose issue here, the amount of 
the grams in a one in one half of a medium sized grapefruit is four point three grams. Certainly very good selection. What are some others that may be well an orange would be one that you would think is a uh, certainly something you would grab to take out the door with you in the morning. And did you know that an, a navel orange, one medium size, one has 6.1 grams of fructose in combination with the glucose? And so a couple of those starts to put you close to that 15 grams a day level. So that would be interesting to know. A banana, one medium banana, 7.1 grams. And the list goes on and on and on. How about an apple? And as I'm moving this list, I'm moving higher and higher up the fructose chain. And that chain, an apple, uh, one medium apple is 9.5 grams of fructose. Obviously, there's glucose in it. The glucose component is fine, but where you find glucose, you'll find an increased absorption of fructose. That's why we're giving you uh, the values of fructose for the fruit because that's where you expect in a sweet tasting um, food that you're going to find glucose, that's what you're looking for, you just didn't know you were getting the fructose, which is what you now need to be careful of. Um, watermelon, one sixteenth, I've never really heard of watermelon dissected in that way, one sixteenth of a medium, medium sized watermelon of 11.3 pears, and one medium 11.6, grapes 12.4, mango 16.2, apricots dried, that is, 16.4, and the head of the list, the one with the highest amount of fructose in it, at least on the list that I've got in front of me, one cup of dried figs has 23 grams of fructose. Yes, it has glucose, but as you can see, well over the list. So... Is there a sugar connection? I think there's no doubt about it. The sugar connection to all those diseases that uh, we've seen a meteoric rise in the incidence of, uh, certainly in the last 100 years. And we were given these facts to, uh, to titillate us uh, in terms of, well, and back in 1900, you had X many people with high blood pressure. We, we went over some of those today. And so we knew that they were they were true, the facts were true, but the science was, an at, was absent to explain the why. And now with science, we're starting to see the why, and as you appreciate the science, you can appreciate how to intervene and, uh, and interact in such a way to have a lesser impact and lesser negative impact on you, because it turns out this fructose component is a nasty one, uh, it does lead to the production of uric acid, and with the production of uric acid, it is that production that leads to the kidney disease, the hypertension, the insulin resistance, and the like. It is the horse. It's not the cart. It's what leads the whole thing, and it's the fructose content that has to be changed, and I think it's a valuable amount of information for you to get to start to see the Maybe we shouldn't say the sugar connection. We should say the fructose connection. But sucrose, which is table sugar, is made up of those two components, the glucose, which is okay, and the fructose, which turns out probably is not okay, and when in combination with glucose, gets absorbed all the more to make it even more not okay, if you know what I mean. And that will close off a discussion of the sugar connection today. I've got a minute or two left. If you want to get in on this uh, with a parting comment, go right ahead, 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. Want to uh, keep on uh, advising you, okay, get, that, uh, get those vitamin D levels. Now, we're moving into uh, a period of time here in the north, the northern hemisphere, we're above the 35th parallel. The 35th parallel, as I've said before, runs through Atlanta, Georgia. In the months of September to May, there is no way, if you're above the 35th parallel, that you can get any direct sunlight, no matter if you're fully exposed 
or not. Now, I'm a little crazy to be running outside in the middle of winter, um, you know, trying to get sunshine. And even if it, even if it is on a bright day. But because the Earth is tilted, you cannot get any direct sunlight. Therefore, you can't get any conversion of calciferol to something called cholecalciferol in the skin. And that's the beginnings of the formation of your active vitamin D, ultimately. But between the months of May, and here we are just toward the end of it, and September, you certainly can. 20 minutes of unprotected skin will get you up to 20,000 units of vitamin D in the most natural way possible. Then, of course, you can go put on an SPF of 40 or 80. And it's okay. Okay, folks, enjoyed it today. See you on Friday. Until then, this is Dr. Dennis Courtney saying so long for AM Impact on Your Health.